Welcome to the Yamaha 650 exhaust pipe modification. I have inch and a half uh, pipe and no one in this part of the country can bend that pipe for me. So I have to get out the duct tape and create my own, make the cuts good, uh, so that when we do weld it, uh, everything is going to be copacetic. Uh, so I'll leave the camera here and I'll show you uh, what I'm doing. Now we've already got the pipe here, see? I've already got this coming out and down, straight down the frame, where the old one used to come out and around. Um, probably because of the uh, tachometer uh, hosing here, but when I put the uh, thing on there, uh, the uh, clamp, and the uh, donut, this pipe is going to set right there and I marked it for a certain spot. See it? And then we'll cut the ends off and tape them down and cut them short. Now, this is the one, this is the one that goes there. This one here, see? So what I did was, I took the straight pipe and I put a little piece in there that fits. Uh, it's a, kind of a, a plastic piece. It fits in there pretty good, but it, it kind of wobbles. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the low income rag, man. I can't get nobody to do this, so you know, old people are crazy. We just gotta do it ourselves. Now, it's not really square if you don't push against it hard, hard, see? So what I'll do is I'll take this, bang it on the ground, and the duct tape comes out. Boom. And we'll get this thing looking fairly straight so that we have the same uh, distance on on both sides up and down now I don't have the expertise to do this stuff but I have the drive The hell's wrong with that? Huh? Check it out. Yeah, I had to be that far off. And like I say, when I uh, weld it, I can make some little bands. It can't be off more than an eighth by the time I get done. So when uh, people are behind me, I'm going to have uh, little curves at the end that come down just a little bit and aim that sound down at the at the uh, pavement. So this one's ready to go. This one's ready to go. I've got a I've got to bolt this on and I gotta measure uh, where it's gonna hit on the frame because I'll be cutting off uh, a lot of this frame that we don't need anymore. Uh, the kickstand came off. We got Harley shocks on there down to 11, 11 and a half from 13. And of course I got this nice seat on here and I lowered it down, so that was pretty, pretty groovy. But we gotta put these nuts on here before I forget. And pull that right in place. Now it's gonna come out uh, almost 3 eighths, but when you crush that donut, it's probably going to go down to about a quarter inch. So this is going to come out away from here and it probably won't hit this 
uh, tachometer uh, cable. I don't want to bend it because they break. Um, I really don't have any spare parts, so. And the bolts I'm putting on there were four, well, they were 14s. Now they're uh, 11 16 is all I have, so they're, they're up around, uh, uh, you know, 17 or 18. Let me see. Probably, yeah, up to a 17. So we'll use the 17. I was just in a hurry, so I could get a few things done around the house besides get this set up and ready to go. And then, of course, welding it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I'll film that, but uh, <laughs> that'll be quite a sight. Hang in there. That will be quite a sight. I love old people. They, they're, 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 they're crazy, man. <laughs> the do it yourself, guys. Now, the threads on here aren't really that long, so I'm just going to make it with the donuts. Clean them up, paint them all black for now. And if I don't like them, I'll have them chrome later. The whole idea is to get that weld uh, down packed because I don't have the gas, the argon gas. So I've, all I've got is a basic MIG welder. So the original pipes are exactly an inch from the frame here but not up here so this is exactly where it goes if I have to put a heat shield here uh, I, I can do so but we'll figure that out we'll figure that out later right now I'm just measuring the distance and I have the pipe marked off uh, with a magic marker so that you could actually do this on a table. And it looks like I've got an inch away and we're just above a bracket down below where you can actually bolt this on. And you know, have I have a double bolt. You really don't need a lot, but like I made this a little high because this wants to drop down under here right about like that so this wants to be cut a little bit and if we aim that right about right there on the top of this bracket, on the other side, we should be pretty good. As you can see, I've uh, already got the other part taped off, and uh, not looking too bad. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's, it's not the best, but for the way we're doing this, it'd be pretty good. Now I have a pencil and a magic marker. I don't know why I call it a magic marker. Uh, I don't see any magic about it. I think the magic is trying to wash it off your hands. <laughs> so. Okay. All right, we got that marked off.
Get that marked off. And uh, my friend Dicky, he showed me a way with my XS 658s. <laughs> I just built that bench out of a uh, 10 by 10. See it? Uh, 10 by 6 or 10 by 8. Uh, you can beat the hell out of that right there. Not a problem. Now, the whole thing is to cut that pipe. Now, now my my friend Dick, my friend Dick is uh, pretty ingenious. He came up with this. Right about right there. There you go. He came up with this. He came up with a clamp. I said, "Hey, how, how can I make a straight line?" And uh, you know, Dicky says, uh, "Well." Take a clamp, a hosing clamp, and put it right on there. And put it, I, I learned that you need to put it underneath so you can cut through and hit the edge of this. The clamp itself sticks out. But it makes a nice, perfect cut if you just stay right against that stainless steel and cut it. But, in this case, it's an angle, so I'm not going to be able to do that. So, what I am going to do, I'm going to take the pencil, I'm going to take this pipe, And I've got a mark there, see it? I've got a mark there. If you gotta really hold this thing square and flat, or, or it's not gonna work. Um, the best thing to do is take the one that's already made and figure that There we go, I'm just getting it re-centered at the angle. Now, we can take and hold that at that angle with that mark I made as a pivoting point for the top. You know, sometimes the pencil works. That the magic marker is a little too thick, and uh, 
but it's really hard to uh, to get that that angle. But you can always grind and uh, you know and piece them together okay, you know. Yeah, no matter what my line does, I've been a carpenter off most of my life, so I got a basic idea of what what I want to do and how I can cut a straight line. I made some wood here. So I don't do any uh, excess damage to the pipe itself. Now, we can put this in just about the way it's going. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to cut. And like I say, you might have to do a little bit of grinding, but Here we go. Let's see how the old cut skills are doing today. Take the old saws off, burnt out blade. There's no other way. Duct tape, burnt out blades. That's how you do it. <laughs> it's crazy, but that's the way it is. You know, you ain't got the money, you ain't got the tools. Figure it out. Take a little round file here. Clean out the inside. We don't get any burrs. Take a flat file and just kind of clean up the edge a little bit. I have a grinder in the cellar, but uh, when it's all said and done, I'll take this down there and I'll fine tune all the fittings so that they're both the same. And I'll lay them on a the table and I'll mark them out draw uh, a piece on cardboard, a big piece of cardboard I have here, and uh, they'll be good enough. They'll be straight. They're not going to be long, so it's not going to be hard to uh, to balance them looking at the bike from the rear, but but I'll get it, and then I'll attach a bracket underneath afterwards, and there's a bolt hole in the original frame that I never used, so we'll have to get some probably stainless steel bolts and and just put a, make a little loop and put it right there. See, like that. It's a little little loop about that big, way back, way back, or, or here. Or so, <laughs> so I just clean that up a bit, and then I'll flatten. carpenter that I am, I'm looking right down the edge of this thing, right across that sucker, and I'm making sure that the edge is pretty straight. See it? I don't have anything real flat right here, but I will. We're just going to get it where I can fine tune it afterwards. Good. 
Okay, now we got this piece ready. Goes into the head, and it's gonna go about that kind of an angle. And then this way, and out. Now I couldn't get a bender, so I'm gonna do it myself. I'll show you over here what we're doing. And you'll get a good look at uh, what I do if I can get the camera into another door here. All right, there's the bike there. Okay, now the key to this whole thing. It's the bolt that's in place. And like I say, we don't have the donut on there because it really needs to be shaved down a little bit to fit in the hole. So we don't want to do that, but I know it's going to come out a little bit. So I've compensated for that by bringing it closer down here. Look, the, uh, this is the earlier model style of piping. This is the original for uh, around 1980, 79 and up. It's maybe 78, where they have a heat shield on it, and it goes out and around the frame and back in, see? And what I've done was I brought it straight down the frame so that it looks nice, you know? And of course, I dropped the bike way down. You know, I probably lowered it... Uh, maybe uh, three inches, which is good because you can put your feet flat. Then we're gonna bolt this uh, head of pipe here right in place and then measure out an inch. I have a pad, but I'm not using it, so we might as well use the pad, because that helps old people. <laughs> and we'll make sure this is seated in there good. Okay, then we'll measure the frame an inch at the bottom, like I did for the other side, okay? Right there. Now get up. If I did the cut right here, if I made that cut right, this should do the same thing as the other side. It should go right here, right there, and above. So, um, it's a hair more, but it's livable. We could drop it down a little bit there, and that will do it right there. Okay, so I can see that I'll need to do a little shaving on this one. There's already a line there. I'll follow it, and it'll be good. It'll be good enough. It, like I say, it's not going to be that far off at all from the rear, and I'm going to angle pipes down so you're not really going to notice uh, if it's not just a round, straight pipe coming out. So, <clears throat> this side's pretty much set. 
And this side, You know, now, now both, both pipes, where they come down and then they're angled, and then they go to the back of the bike, both sides, the way I did it, is they're both screwed up about 330 seconds or less. And so I'll shave a sixteenth, flatten them out, and put them on a piece of paper, and I'm done. Uh, I spent three and a half hours yesterday. Uh, I'm in Wound Soccer Rhode Island. Nobody can bend an inch and a half metal without crimping it or something like that, right? And I didn't want a well because I wanted less welding. I would have only had two wells. You know, one for the long straight pipe. <laughs> And one for the tail end and then clean that up but now I'm gonna have three wells well, I guess the more the merrier so in all actuality I'm done <laughs> uh, you know I'll research uh, with my friend uh, Matt he he might have uh, he's got a a nice MIG welder with the gas so when, when he makes a bead uh, it's more apt to be better than the MIG welder that I bought from him uh, which I don't have gas for right now I, I've got the flux but it's not the old poisonous stuff the good stuff you know what I mean the EPA runs the world man and uh, you can't get anything good I do a lot of soldering so you know, you need that good old-fashioned uh, flux that eats into the metals and, and, and causes whatever solder or welding you do to stick real good. And uh, so I'm lacking that kind of stuff. And I don't want to spend a lot of money. I really don't have a lot of money to spend. So uh, i got to make this as nice as possible because... Uh, to me, it's a one-time deal. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> you know, people don't want to do it again. <laughs> so, that's it. Uh, I'll give you a, a quick look at the workshop. What I did was I, uh, I cut a shed. It's a, it's a nice little old garage. Um, it's pretty cool. I put that roof on there for a cover between the two doors. And... I found that going in and out of that sliding door right there is kind of a pain. So, uh, as you can see, I opened up this garage nice, nice. And it's perfect for a motorcycle. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's good for working on a car, uh, but you could probably do that. It's really ancient. I put a 6x6 uh, six six beam up all the way with you know, four by four is holding it up and I put it up all by myself right there and then I can put a chain right there and I have a kind of a come along kind of thing where I lift the back of the bike up uh, at, at that point there somewhere in here. There's metal under there and I can put a hook that I hook to it now that it's lower. And I've got the 79 light instead of the 81. And then in the back I made a uh, if you can see it, you know, you got to have inspection stickers. So I, I made some uh, stainless steel plate guard and I attached a little fin to the bottom so you could put, you know, the inspection sticker. The paint job actually is painted by, with water. And it's a poster from Australia, 1970, when I was in Vietnam. 
And if you can see over here, I had them put class of 70, 71. And down here was a Vietnamese girl who did my laundry. And my daughter used to work there. An American guitar pick, yeah. And as you can see, he modernized uh, the painting. I have this uh, on, in a photograph. So, uh, you know, the kid that did this did, did a hell of a job, but I'm not thrilled about the peace sign, but that's the way he did it, because we had what we called the broken peace sign while we were there, and he, he put a road coming out of the guy's eye and going down and mingling with blood and sunshine, and that's how he viewed it after I told him the story. Now, he did a, a super job, but it looks old and ancient. It all looks all cracked and stuff. It's only five years old, but it looks like I've probably had it since 1970. And these are my favorite boys. Uh, they're not Vietnamese. They're uh, Aborigine uh, Montagnard people. And if you can see the way that kid's dressed, he's got leather around there on his ankles. Uh, his face is war-torn, and it's me, uh, somebody was trying to kill me, I can't imagine why, holy moly was I scared, but see, the peace signs were starting to get broken, see them? They have a chip taken out of the right side, oh, so much for peace, but that's the old 650, I love her, I love my, uh, my 650. And, uh, of course, I had cut the hole in the wall right there so you could get into the shed. And I did some cementing because there was wood down there and a hole. And that's pretty much dry. But, you know, then we have access to the lawnmower and um, tools over there. And then I put a uh, 40s uh, Air Force, uh, Quantum Air Force Base uh, naval metal table over there. Uh, next to some windows that need to be repaired, but it's an old place. I love it. Um, you know, it's got all kinds of different colors stuff here. But the main thing is that it's a place to work. It's a place to store things, and you know, we whackers and yeah, you know, and bells. And my my younger brother before he died, he put all the uh, electricity in for me. Dug it in. And you can see where uh, he did that, uh, coming out of the house right there. And ran underground over to that point. Up and around and bleh, And I added uh, a light over there with a string. So, you know, it's a cool little place. I got some works to do with a pretty this top, but I'm not going to go crazy with it. Uh, as long as there's not a lot of dust in here. So that ends my video on prepping pipes. As you can see, I've, uh, I was going to take a wheel, <laughs> see it? <laughs> and now I'm going to make my own bender. But it looked like it was kind of soft metal. So I said, well, instead of creasing that, I wasted uh, nine bucks in a few minutes and... Uh, so as you can see, I cut the tire off there, and uh, pretty heavy rubber, I use it for something, um, gaskets. Uh, so this stuff can stay here for a few minutes. And uh, as you can see, everything is laid out, ready to go. And we'll put that little uh, angled tail piece on the end. It'll be like that, but a lot less, you know, kind of like that. But very, very little, and just cut a another piece that I have on the bench for the end, for the tail end up there, and uh, we'll be good to go. We'll be good to go. Got BMW uh, rubbers here. They fit perfect. Um, yeah, my son gave me that idea, my, my, my younger son, and uh, got Kawasaki lights on the handlebars, which I really like. Um, I don't like the ones sticking out of the light, but I like the ones in the back. To stick out because I don't have a rider now. So 
as you can see, you know, it, it, it's well lit up for the Rhode Island area. I mean, if I was living up in the mountains, I wouldn't worry about lighting. But here, I think uh, you should pay attention to that. And if I zoom in, you can see I've got uh, cobs from the original 80, 81s. Um, metal sides instead of the plastics with the same pictures, kind of. But they're in nicer shape. You call, we haul. If we can't truck it, fuck it. <laughs> That's it, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people uh, came back from them. I just never did. But I cut that loft. It used to come out to the beam up there. And I cut it back. And I have a ladder over there where I can uh, go up there. And uh, I have all kinds of uh, motorcycle parts up in those boxes. Nice and neat and car pots and I put my ladder up there so we really uh, opened it up I'm really thrilled about this so um, that is the end thank you good day.